Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Bancroft Brothers animation podcast. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, Tom. Ho, ho, ho is That's right. That's what we needed we're, right there. We are right in the summertime. We just finished up Mermaid. Are you glad that's over? I, is that Mermaid? I, is that like just having a ton of fish on your back? Tony, I had only one fin in on this time. Just a little dip <laughs> of the fin because I had great partners who we just did a podcast with. That was Lauren Barger and Whitney Paulette. Go back love and listen. Them. Yeah, they're so we, sweet. We're like a, a a a threesome that we just love each other and and love talking don't, about don't, art. Don't say that. Don't. We just, we can say that. We have love for each other. What's wrong with that? You're a trio. You're a trio, Tom. Just say a I trio. know. But I've I've professed my love for them as as individuals. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. You're gonna have to sit with that and live with Happy it. Happy anniversary on your wedding anniversary coming up too. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's later in July. Tony, it's not that kind of love, and you know it. Gee, I know. It's platonic oh, no. artist love. I get it's it. art love. Right. Tony, tonight, yes. this evening, this late afternoon, we do have somebody really cool. I want to bring him on because we don't have a lot of time with him. So his name is Pete Oswald. Come Let's on hear in. for Pete Oswald. Hey, Pete. hey, buddy. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tony. Thank, for, thank you for having me. Super well, and we're excited. happy to have you here. Pete. Because, and we, you know what, we're, we're super fans. I was geeking out on you a little bit before we started. I'm going to say it on mic now. Super fan. I've been watching your work over the years. You have a very graphic, cool designing look. You come from children's book, but you've also been doing productions for a while in animation as a viz dev artist. You've done all kinds of character, even early character design stuff, visual development work, production design on Garfield. Now That's this is the newest where, one. Yes. yes. Although yes. I hear it can't, Pete, it can't be proven. I looked on IMDb and it's not there. Don't trust. Yeah. Don't trust the internet. I think the last, last four years was just a dream. It was like, <laughs> it was like, a, it was like a food coma. I think, you know, it was like a Garfield food coma. That's that, starting uh, to sound you know. like an orange nightmare. <laughs> lots of orange, lots of lasagna. Uh, I'm super, <laughs> super excited to be in this like Bancroft sandwich right here. So this is cool. I mean, hey, uh, speaking of you. food, I feel like Pete, Pete, uh, food has been a big part of your art influence. You have a children's book series that has to do with food. We're going to talk about yeah. that in a sec. You did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Uh, you worked on that in visual development. Angry Birds movie. I think you were the art director on that. Is that correct? Angry Production designer, yeah. yeah. Production and designer. you can't eat birds. You could eat birds. So you could, going. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and for those that. Leica fans, everybody needs to know that Pete also worked on Paranorman. That's a that's a cool uh, classic right yeah. there. Not wow. very edible, but a really good movie. I know. Yeah, yeah let, not, not not that much food in there, but yeah, no. more more zombies. Mm -hmm. than I want to get to Garfield, but let's start back with the children's books because I think that's what you started doing first. Is that correct? Uh, I, I actually started animation and then actually, no. went went into went went into uh, children's, children's books. books, and I've kind of done both uh, for the past you know, 15 years, um, which is, you know, to me, I just love drawing and painting and telling stories. Um, I love the, like the team aspect of, of working in a, you know, in a big animation crew, um, getting, you know, working off that energy. But then I also love, you know, creating children's books in a, in a little bit smaller environment in a smaller mm -hmm. team aspect. So, yeah. um, like, you know, I'm, I'm able to, as long as I'm able to bounce back and forth and do that, like, I, I love, I love having, having that, um, I think, it, and they both kind of make, make me a better artist, I think, on both sides of that. Uh, well, so. and you have a, I want to layer this in there, you have a really interesting style, and it isn't your traditional animation style. And I think our listeners that are trying to break it in the industry and stuff like that, they're also, uh, they're often being told, at probably at some of these schools that maybe aren't the better schools. We'll just say, yeah. Oh, that Lipscomb. doesn't look that did not Lipscomb. No, not Lipscomb uh, university we, where we teach, right? We teach there. Yeah. But other schools where it's like, Oh no, this is the Disney look. This is the look that everybody needs to draw. And that's, what's going to get you a job. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and there is a really kind of a, and it's dimensionality. It's all those things. And your style is a little bit more flatter, um, and really kind of like, if you look at Paranorman, if you look yeah. at Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, you worked on Madagascar too also. Right, yeah. um, those are all very stylized um, series, shows and films. And so tell us about that. Like, was yeah. that 
what was your first work and was it kind of like the individual side of your your style yeah that, I, I mean uh, style in is, conflict with traditional sort of shows for sure i mean i whenever like style comes up um i i i get especially with, like talking to younger artists and everything um i get a, a little apprehensive about like you need to be, you need to have this style i think you need to be able to draw in many different styles right to especially yeah. to work in the animation uh industry um to to create you know picture books every project will need a different style so having just one one kind of house style for yourself i think is, is you know limits limits you um but at the end of the day you also need to like have your own personal identity and and yeah and it's and it's like it's walking that fine line of like i'm only able to draw one certain way uh mm. but i also need to be able to draw you know zombies for paranorman and i need to be able to draw uh garfield for the garfield movie you know so it, it it's ha it's having some versatility but yet still retaining the stuff that makes you identifiable if that mm -hmm. makes sense because it's a really hard thing to do because i i i think early on you know in at least in my career i was going and you're you're latching on trying to trying to find like what what excites you and what makes you stand out as a designer um while also trying to fit the needs of the show or movie or book that you're working on um mm -hmm. and and it's just it's finding that 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 balance um but i think it, being able to have different styles and bring a different look to a particular uh project is is the ultimate thing i'm so glad you said that pete because i can't mm -hmm. tell you how many students that tom and i have and i'm sure you probably do done some teaching but certainly when you go to conventions there's probably students that come up to you young junior artists and stuff that are like how do i find my style that's like the number yeah. one question it's like i always oh. love telling them you know what one you already have one it's already bitten you in the butt you just don't know it yet but yep. you know what knows it everybody else that sees your work they can yeah. peg a drawing that you For do sure. and say oh that was done by katie or that was done by blake or whatever yep or Pete, and they would know right off the top of their head because they've seen enough of your the, work. The artist is the last one to know what their style Isn't really that is. For sure, I mean, yeah, we're, we're a little blind that way. And I think, you know, yeah. you know outsiders looking in, it, they, they notice that. It, that it is kind of a, yeah. so talk to us about style. Like, do you believe, uh, I guess, in style, that it's something that's sort of intrinsically a part of how you draw, or is I, it something they search after at all? I think, um, you know, is if, if, if we're talking to a young up and coming artist, I think trying out many different things, you know, like taking a master class in, in different styles, um, you know, finding, finding, you know, artists that, you know, from the past that you, uh, connect with and, and trying to emulate those different styles, not not as a um, to copy, but to kind of really go through to figure out like how how they they created this these types of images or the style, um, so that you can learn for yourself and be like, oh, I'm going to take a little bit of Ronald Searle, I'm going to take a little bit of Miroslav Sasek, I'm going to take you know whoever who are those artists are, and then you and then and then I'm going to run through the Pete filter, and that's going to you know what I you know how how you yeah how you create. So I think really studying and and becoming a a like historian uh helps you know know the past and then you can help create and find yourself uh, and and create your own uh version of that i really i have yeah. i have somebody that i follow tom on instagram and it's funny just the other day is it me i think it's a it was a character designer that said this and i wish i could remember exactly who because i'd give him credit because i thought it was great um it, it ba he basically said something like um uh, our style is an amalgamation of our failures trying to copy the things that we love oh that For was sure. me yeah i That's, said that i love that i, I love yeah. the failure part because yeah uh art becoming an artist is all about failure right like i'm yeah. feeling every single day at at sitting here at the drawing drawing desk or you know wh whatever project i'm on and you're you're finding out things about yourself uh you know that Oh, I like that, or I don't like that, or or I need to work on that part of my my craft, or or whatever that is. 
when when you're doing let's just talk character design for just a second mm -hmm. when you're doing say character designs for a gig right and and it looks like you did that on madagascar mm -hmm. too and uh you know uh cloudy with a chance of meatballs yeah. i looked at your stuff there yeah. man it looks like you did all the final model sheets because that looks like the movie uh exactly um i don't and i don't know for the audience i have a snoring pug in the background so if oh, i hear that snoring, i did hear, you hear that i didn't hear uh i yeah, thought you I, got I, a little bored for a minute you thought i was just starting up my chainsaw just dozing off. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was your stomach actually i'm like tom no. get something to eat just, just no throw a carrot and down. i can't stop him so all this food talk is making tom really hungry yeah, <laughs> yeah right no it's just a snoring pug yeah uh, so what was i gonna say oh for the character design like, do you find that, and because everybody's different, I suppose, maybe every job is different, but do you find that when you sit down to do a character design of, say, you've just read this script, mm -hmm. oh, I got to draw, um, what we'll just say, it's, say, Garfield's, uh, you know, best friend right. or somebody that's a new yeah. character. Um, and the first drawing you do to the eighth or whatever, how many you feel like before you're done and you can show the director, um, do you feel like the first ones are the ones you always go back to, or is it more the final? Like you've done all these revisions I, and come up with better ideas yeah, and then boom, which is the very, one that usually gets picked? Very rarely is it the first one I've, I've found. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it, especially working on, you know, big, big uh, films with um, a lot of producers and, you know, getting, getting the, the director on board you have to go through this process and my my process always starts with like research like doing before i even start drawing you know like i read the script when i was hired on for the garfield movie um this was really cool because i was a 80s kid growing up looking you know reading yeah. jim davis's comic strips and oh man watching the saturday morning specials and stuff so um when when i got a call from mark dindle to to work on this um mark dindle, was, the director the Mark Dindle, the, the director who, who directed the Garfield movie. Um, I, one, I was super excited to, to collaborate with Mark because I had never uh, worked with him before, but heard, you know, amazing things and I always admired his work. And two, um, I was, you know, a huge Garfield fan. Uh, and, and you know, they gave me the script and, you know, now, now we had to figure out what the Garfield world and what Garfield's design looked like because, you know, Garfield has gone through since 1978. He's gone. He's still going through these evolution uh, of his his own character design. And then look at the show. And this is the first kind of full CG version of of him. We just wanted to be really authentic and true and pay homage to Jim Davis and what like Jim has has. So we kept just going back to the comic strip, like literally yeah. like we would, you know, I'd read the script and be like, OK, how? How would they, how would Jim design this in in the comic strip, but then also bring it open up the universe to kind of you know make it fresh and make it new and make it uh, contemporary and exciting. Um, so it, yeah, it, it always starts with um, with research and then doing a ton of uh, iterations. Um, working with Mark is really awesome because he he talks and he knows how, he is an artist himself, so he really knows how to communicate that way. Uh, and, and he'll do little sketches over mine. And then, you know, we, we brought in uh, Taylor Creighton Buell for uh, character designs. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Shout to, out to Taylor. We're big yeah. fans of Taylor, too. We're going to have him on the podcast for sure. Taylor, yeah. Taylor brought, uh, brought this um, look and feel to these, to these characters that were just uh, iconic of, you know, kind of the, the mid 80s Garfield that we, that we love, that I fell in love with. And that's kind of what we, yeah we honed in on but then he also you know unlocked this um really fresh and new style to it um to these to these characters and brought them brought them to life what a dream project yeah. I, I would have loved to have gotten that call and so you you got to um how much did you work with jim davis the creator of garfield um i personally didn't work that much with him uh mark would and and the producers regularly would have calls with them show them update updates and mostly story his, things his and story stuff and i think and the design of like some of you know the main the main characters um Garfield, so i like guess uh, contractually he probably had had to have some say 
on this uh, yeah, yeah, as far as I know, I'm, I'm sure he did. Yeah. 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 yeah but he, uh, you know, he has his own, a lot of listeners might know, not know this. Um, um, and comic strips are, are a bit outdated. So I'm sure there's people listening right now that have never even heard of Garfield. Shame on you, I say. Shame. <laughs> That's probably not look, possible. Look it up. Look but, it up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, because it was such a huge strip, though, um, and probably more our generation, and, and I know we're, we're older than you, but um, Tom and I were deeply influenced by Garfield, by Jim mm-hmm. Davis. Early on in our careers, we wanted to be comic strip artists, so we know a lot about Jim. But he had his own crew, um, and some of them were Cal Arshans, Cal Arts uh, mm-hmm. graduates that we yeah. knew that got mm-hmm. jobs there with um, with Jim Davis for in Paws, Paws. Incorporated. Paws Incorporated. Yeah. And that was his, he kind of created an assembly line of people that also he trained how to draw Garfield. And this was largely like in the 90s and 2000s, I think. Um, for licensing some, opportunities, honestly. Licensing, yeah. Children's all books kinds of and, stuff, yeah. yeah. Not even on the comic strip as much as all the other opportunities, animation and TV. There's been many TV series. So he must have been pretty used to working with one. He's used to working with other artists yeah. and taking over his his very intimate understanding of the design of Garfield, and then kind of adapting it to other mediums and stuff. But this was something new for him. Did you did you ever hear about it? Any of his feedback? Because this is CG, so it was, it was very dimensional and probably one of the freshest looks at Garfield. I think that's ever been done. And I and I I applaud you guys because Thank I think you. yeah. I loved, I loved, I will just say, I loved what they did with the Peanuts movie um, and, and mm. how they adapted Charles Schultz's yeah. comic strip to uh, the movie, um, the, the Peanuts movie did. Um, and then I saw this one and I was like, ooh, even better. Um, oh, thank I you gotta for saying say, that. Yeah, that's, I'm sure you guys were talking a lot about like, sure. how, the, how the Peanuts yeah. movie successfully well, did that pretty well. But, but yeah, well, tell me a little bit about that process of with Jim Davis. Yeah, and, so uh, and adapting Garfield to three dimensions. The producer John Cohen, who also did the Peanuts movie, uh, is responsible for the Garfield movie. And I worked with him on oh. all the Angry Birds stuff. So, uh, mm. I mean, he he really is responsible for kind of getting this entire project off off the ground and getting it connected with Alcon and Sony. And um, <clears throat> so, talking with John. You know he he's also a huge garfield fan so we immediately connected um with that and you know bringing bringing jim davis into the process um you know we would regularly show him updates and and get get his approval on things and we we just really wanted to to make this a kind of authentic true uh, homage to his to his comics because i think over the years some of the stuff um didn't didn't closely follow the comic strips and and we really wanted to like just go back to what what really made this uh yeah this this you know character iconic and um you know and and find the design of garfield like if you know if you see some of the you know garfield's evolution like you know, he got taller, his feet got bigger, he came less uh-huh. cat like and yes, we he got huge. <laughs> yes, he got really big. Um and we kept going back to the mid mid eighties, um, kind yeah. of the Saturday morning, you know, or the, the, the Saturday, uh, special stuff, you know, uh-huh. Garfield and friends, um, mm-hmm. and, and love kind of that kind of squishy, chunky, you know, um, really appealing world, uh, that, that was, that was set there. And we just kept going back to that. You know I mean, what you guys, I, I love yeah, too, is there's been other, you know garfield movies right like this right. isn't the first there was some kind of bad ones not so great ones and so i'm sure you had to kind of live in that lineage of like oh For sure i think we're just like a, a sequel to one of those from the past yeah now having chris pratt come in and be the new voice that helped quite a bit to differentiate you yeah. guys because it was bill murray if i remember yeah right. bill yeah. murray did, yeah. did those early 2000 ones you know very uh, dry he did did yeah. he do the tv series too i can't remember um, no, I think uh, Lorenzo so. Music was the original uh, oh, voice okay. of. Uh, wasn't the that's guy, right. Was, yeah. Wasn't the guy that did is Homer Simpson? Didn't he do some Garfield? Maybe he did. I don't, yeah, yeah, he might. He might have. Uh, There's but been a having, ton of iterations. Yeah. yeah. The, the nice thing is, you guys found again good comparison with the Peanuts movie because I thought the Peanuts movie was really well done um, as far as kind of adapting the style mm-hmm. to CG, Agreed. especially right. Yeah. 
And with Garfield in the past, they make him really hairy. You know how, like, in the early days of CG and adapting, like, Scooby-Doo and things like yeah. that, CG, they would just, like, go more photorealistic, and they'd add yeah. all this hair to him. And, and, oh, he's a dog, though. He's got to be hairy. I know, right? And so you guys found a really nice mixture of, oh, there's a little bit of a feeling of, of hair, uh, and it comes and goes a little bit. For sure. Just, you know, as yeah. as needed, you kind of fuzz Play them up, up a little bit. Don't. Yeah. I think yeah. Um, that, that was part of the production design kind of, you know, overall idea from the beginning was, you know, we talked a lot about um, CG. And a lot of times in CG, they make everything look real because you can, right? Like you can do right. anything you want. You can mm -hmm. do it. But we we leaned into making it more believable than 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 real, you know. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to create this world that was believable to the Garfield universe, but wasn't necessarily like human or you know realistic, so to speak. Um, so is is keeping that charm and keeping that kind of that toyetic quality to not only the design of the characters, but to the design of the, you know his house to to the world to the props and everything now uh, pete I, I gotta get a little technical not technical but on the mm -hmm. business financial side i keep hearing i've heard two things that the movie is a success and then it's a failure i'm sure you've heard both sides of this when it first came out oh my gosh it beat uh what was the other movie uh that came out simultaneous oh pete. furiosa yeah there it is Mm -hmm. Furiosa blew it away, yep. right? And it did. Oh, the, um, yeah. And and it was unfortunate how little that one made because it's a good movie from when yeah, it is. I haven't yeah. seen it, yet, but I heard it's great. Um, anyway, and then, but then also like, oh, but expectations were this, like way up here. And so, how do you got? How do you feel? No, I, I mean, uh, how, uh, everything how that, they, that that you know that I've heard is like it's been a great. You know, it was a sixty million dollar budget. And, yes. it, and we're way we're way past that so it's uh it's it's a great as far as that's like, what i heard opening weekend off, yeah, yeah you cleared si everything 64 million or something mm -hmm. like that so internationally it's doing great yeah so i think i think what you have heard tom is what? incorrect because this is a smash no 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 just, this came out let me say why tony i'll just back that up Memorial what? Day weekend was the worst Memorial Day weekend that they've had in a couple decades. It came yes. out Memorial Day weekend in the, bo in the box office. In the, in the, in the, yeah. the story, the, office, yeah. the story right. they were selling, and this is why I'm asking this question: is oh my gosh, everything was a failure. But then you'd hear little stories on the side, and I think it's grown since then. Oh, sure. wait, Garfield actually did really well. Oh, Garfield it's still yeah. making money. Oh, internationally, it's done extremely well. We so, were we were able to make uh, you know ma do really well, but the overall box office, I think you know people are getting back to traveling and they were just were going to the movie theaters, um, yeah. you know, to have a, a, a movie like Furiosa not you know kind of underperform like that. But Garfield has been fantastic, uh, and and you know I think people there's been a lot of supporters. There's that kind of built in um, you know audience of you know the parents that grew up with with yeah. uh with seeing garfield and now reintroducing them to their to their kids well as we all know in, in hollywood business you know one of the things that's broken about hollywood is that there's always the comparison and this is the thing that irks me about hollywood so when you talk about that memorial day weekend it's like well in comparison to other memorial day yeah. weekends that were so much bigger this was a disaster and and what gets lost is that little story of like, well, no, Garfield performed really well, mm -hmm. whether it was Memorial Day weekend or well, not. Well, yeah, yeah. Whether yeah, and, and against a, a, a really hyped live action movie, Furiosa, mm -hmm. and then what what really means the most to me when I look at the the commerce of Hollywood is they're not making another Furiosa movie. They they came out and said it did so poorly that they're not going to make another one. I am yeah. sure they are going to make another Garfield. And Tom, just so you know, $181 million worldwide is, is a success. Internationally, $109, 71 million dollars domestically. Yeah. It's done so far. Yeah. It's still accumulating. Yesterday it made a yeah. million dollars in the yeah. US. So it's still yeah. going. Congratulations. And then it's going to go to streaming and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to make another one. 
I can, I guarantee. I hope it. so. Fingers crossed. I haven't, you know, I haven't heard either way, but yeah, I, oh, I hope they. Do. I, I put money in that if there's yeah. a repeat of that kind of uh, outcome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, hey, who you would got it? the you got the honor. We we kind of skipped over, but I want to double back to it a little bit. You got the honor of working with uh, Mark Dendel. Now, Mark and I go way there back. There we go. For, for those that don't know, and we got it, Tom. We got to have Mark on the podcast. Let's yes. do that. Let's book him. I I want to hear some of his stories, but. Um, he was the director of Cast Don't Dance. He was the director of Emperor's New Groove. That's where I got to know him and work with him. Just a fabulous guy. And f- I feel like and I feel he's like he directed be one of the reasons. Garfield, too. You, you didn't finish and that. he directed this. Well, Pete oh, already said that. Pete yeah. already said that, Tom. He did mention you're listening. that. I just wanted yeah. to. Yeah. And as the director of Garfield, how was that working with, with him? Um, I always thought that he had really good comedy instincts. Obviously, Emperor's New Groove is, is a sign of that. But um, how did you guys interact? How did you interact with uh, your director, Mark, on this movie uh, as a production designer? Mark was, uh, he was like our Zen leader from the very beginning. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, if, you, if you know Mark, then you know that he's like one of the most collaborative human beings you'll ever meet. Um, yeah, he really is. And he really, he's like, I, he'll, he listens to everyone, uh, in in the best ways and, and lets everybody kind of get their, get their ideas out. And then he kind of filters, you know, and, and then pushes forward what, uh, what he thinks is the best. And it usually is the the best like instinct. Um, but I, like, as, uh, you know, working with Mark, this, this production was, uh, over four years. So, um, yeah, it's we, kind of we, a long production process. It was a, yeah, we had a, we had a little, you know, the COVID hit in there, so um, mm. that that slowed up things. But we we started in 2019, and then a few months into into the project, uh, uh, you know, they sent everybody home, and we started working working from from our from our homes. And you know, I talked to Mark daily, and he it was just always one of those conversations that I look forward to every day. Um, mm. because he, one, he just, you know, he really cares about his crew. He, he's, you know, in, mm. in, incre- incredibly, uh, passion, passionate about his, his craft and, and this movie. Um, and, you know, talk, you know, bouncing ideas with him. He is, he is an artist himself. So he, he knows how to speak the language. Um, and he'll even do drawers and, and interact that way. So I mm. love it when, when directors are hands-on like that, that can, can really not verbally tell you, but also visually show you what to do. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. a really special, special quality. Um, and so, you know, collaborating with him on a four, four year project, like he's, he's a huge reason him and Craig Sos, who's one of the other producers, like they just created this really incredible, um, family even though we were re- like everybody's working from you know their 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 homes and their pajamas like they were able to you know <laughs> create this, this yeah you know, like what a crazy of- time i know yeah. that, that's yeah. awesome yeah. that's it, awesome funny, like, i think i heard about uh, and that, i'm glad you kind of went into like why it took so long because i was i heard about the garfield movie a, a while back yeah. and then and then mark was attached then forgot about it completely because it yeah. just sort of went away we didn't hear anything more about it and um, and then all of a sudden, um, I met, here's another Mark I'm going to throw into the mix. So I don't know Mark. Yeah. I'm a, I know Mark Kiefer. I yeah. Don't know our Mark. editor. Yeah. Yeah. So he lives here in Nashville. Yep. And I remember he moved. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually worked together on some of my pencilish studios projects when he was in sort of a, like a gap of, of waiting okay, yep, to, yep. to kind of get back going again. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. So that's my connection. That's so cool. Yeah. Mark Kiefer is incredible. He, by the, yeah, he's the editor of the movie. Great guy. Uh, lots of, lots of back and forth with, with him. Uh, you know, he, he and his team brought some really uh, awesome like action sequences and then they, the way they, they timed the comedy is just, yeah, he's brilliant. That's, and he that's he finished it here in Nashville. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was, was he would like perfect. literally we'd have sessions like that, you know, on Zoom, and he'd be at his edit bay, and uh, uh, you know, wearing his cowboy hat and boots, and just yeah, for it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we could go on for a long time, but I know you got to tight out today. Got to pick up yeah. the kids from school. Totally yeah. get that, Pete. I want to I want to make this the last question though, because it's really for our listeners. Um, I feel like we have room for two more questions. Oh, yeah, don't get greedy. Don't want. get greedy. Yeah. Don't get greedy yeah. now, Tom. But it's like for the listeners, 
<laughs> the kids. <laughs> yeah, the kids will wait. Um, right. So um, for the listeners, though, I think a lot of people are confused about what a production designer does sure. on an animated oh, feature. Is. And this, uh, obviously, from the get-go, not your style, not your characters. Um, and one, you had to adapt to somebody else's style. You have a very unique style that could be that could be the look of the film in itself. If it was anything but Garfield, because obviously that has to look someone in the ballpark yep. of Garfield. How is that as a production designer that when you do have such a unique brand, a unique, unique go-to style for yourself that you love and you're passionate about, how is that adapting somebody else's style then? And how do you work with other artists to make sure that style is consistent all the way through the film? That's a really good question. So, you know, as a production designer for animated film, I'll, I'll work really closely with the directors and producers to create the overall look and tone of the film. So we'll create the characters, the backgrounds, uh, the lighting keys, um, anything visual, obviously in animation, you have to, you have to create, right? It's not like live action. You go out and you have your background and like, we're, we're designing everything. Um, so for me, um, I knew that because this is the Garfield movie, like it had, like you said, it has to look like Garfield and has to have uh, that iconic rec recognizable feature. But within that box, like, I think there's so much room to play with as far as, you know, design, your shape language, your, your, your color theories, um, you know, your color script um, and, and figuring out, you know, uh, the overall look of that, you know, so that's where I really kind of, I knew that like, oh, these characters aren't going to look exactly like my drawings because they have to look like Jim Davis's style. But mm -hmm. we, on top of that, we can, we can start to infuse some of our own ideas. For example, we really wanted this world to feel chunky and, and, uh, really, like like very toyetic you know so everything everything was was almost like a melt melting candle where it, it had like a weight to it um mm. and if you look at you know just some of like taylor creighton buell's character designs everything had this like really squishy feel to it and mm -hmm. and even the in the textures like we we enlarged some of the textures and made it made it almost feel like stop motion we looked at um we looked at uh, um, some of the like old stop motion um, ideas and and um, trying to figure out like what made those things appealing. And because this is done in the computer, how do we make it feel tangible and and almost like yeah. handmade, bringing that handmade quality? We use um, we looked at the Viewmaster. You guys remember Viewmasters? I know. Yes, um, I know. yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Mark brought those up early in the, and I was like, Oh my God, I love them. I'm so glad you brought that up. And so we started looking at those things, you know, they'd make like dirt out of coffee grounds and, you know, different using different textures. So we started kind of incorporating some of that, those ideas to, to really enhance that idea of like, when you, when you see a dollhouse, like you want to, you want to shrink down and, and set yourself in that, in that yeah. world. Um, so that was part of the kind of the production design, language and ideas that we, we didn't was want the, to, you know, the, I, I can't help but do, but guess but by the way when you said that melting that feeling mm -hmm. of uh, kind of melting and weight that is the Lilo and Stitch uh mentality too I remember that for Lilo and Stitch was there like everything that Chris Sanders drew had this sort of like weight and kind of weight to it yeah melted uh -huh. film yeah um so that's a, that's one thing I was thinking of but for shape language to me, it has to be ovals, right? Like for sure, it's, it's everything ovalized. is rounded. Everything, everything is rounded. rounded, like yeah. Like even when we designed a coffee mug, like all the all the corners are super rounded, and it's like it's almost like you took a piece of clay and you like molded it and you made yeah. it kind of like really chunky, you know. So the yeah. props, the 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 design of of uh, like I said, Garfield's house and and everything. There you go. There's a mug. Yeah, my mug, my mug is on style. I think you it, it see is it. that one. That yeah. one is like straight from the Garfield movie. Yeah, that's pretty char chunky, I guess. Yeah, it's a white mug. It was Tom's, actually Tom's head is kind of chunky too, so it would be on style too. Soft, dome like. I have a big brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> so smart. I feel so bad smart. about that. Um, okay, so and by the way, so last question. I really wanted to get into AI. Telling. Um, oh, there's no time. <laughs> there's no time. Here, 
but we did, you brought him up at the beginning before Tony came on and ruined our fun. Uh, you said <laughs> something about, we had interviewed a friend uh, for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Oh yeah, you sure. So, yeah. Okay, there, you sure. Yeah. Uh, go back and listen to that. It was great. So he was the production designer of Teenage Mutant Ninja mm -hmm. Turtles. Yeah, you sure. Production awesome. designer. The, one of the questions, and this is more of a follow-up to Tony's question. One of the questions we asked him was, what is the difference between a production manager, sorry, production designer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, Big production difference design. between a production manager. Big difference yeah. there. Production yeah. designer and an art director. So it's kind of just really great question. production designer. Yeah. Lay, layer in the art director's so role. The art director and and uh, my art director on this film was Jeannie Chang, and she's incredible. She um, as an art director, um, at least on, on on this film, I've had, you know, depends on the film and, and different focuses. Her specialty is color. Like she uh, is an incredible painter mm -hmm. and and was responsible for figuring out the entire entire color script of the movie for everybody out there that doesn't know what a color script is. We break down each act, each sequence into a specific palette. You know, and we mm. do these little thumbnail, we do like literally thousands of little thumbnail paintings that inform the lighters um, it, to figure out what the, what the actual lighting of, of each scene will be, the tone of it, the feeling. Um, and Mark, Dindle was awesome because he really, he really knew how to talk about color and color is such an ambiguous thing. It's like, you know, it's hard, it's hard to kind of, it, it's all connected to emotion, just like the movie yeah. soundtrack, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're at, when we're designing the, the, the color script, when Jeannie, our art director is designing this, like that was her main, main focus. Mm -hmm. um, and then as, as a production designer, I'm kind of looking out of everything. I'm looking at the, the, the design of, you know, the overall world, the characters, and then we're coming back to the color and then we're going back to the story. Like I'm, mm. I'm really responsible for going to each department, um, animation effects, uh, editorial, you know, every, and making sure that we're still on like in line with, with our original like mission statement from, you know, the first day, the first day that we started, it's carrying that all the way through. Like, as you guys know, yeah, converting a 2d drawing to a, three-dimensional CG idea mm -hmm. there's so much lost in between there and it's maintaining mm -hmm. that's like uh, that that be that became my biggest focus as a production designer like making sure that whatever we were drawing two-dimensionally was being you know was being translated to to the CG side I, I feel well, like I, as a director there's a that. yeah you did an awesome job about that you yeah, really did that yeah thank you I feel like as a director there's a trifecta of people that you want to hire first. And those three people tend to be uh, that production designer, that art director, and then probably a, a head of animation or an animator yeah. to do those early animation tests. Sure. And um, I feel like, uh, tell me if you agree with this, because this isn't quite your background, but it feels like the production de designers tend to come from the world of what we used to call layout, right? Mm -hmm. It was, they're more involved with design. They're designers, and and you yep. are too, you are that. And that yep. you're, you're you, a lot of your background is background painting and yep. character design. Um, if you look at your credits, mm -hmm. and so uh, and I don't know where layout and designing backgrounds, but that's children's books. You're doing the whole yeah. illustration, so maybe that's what makes you a great production designer. I do feel like the art directors tend to always be like they used to be background painters, right? They are the, <laughs> yeah. like you said, their color, they're all about what is the texture? What is the sort of the rendering of yeah. your rough designs? Um, and then of course the animator. So who is that animator element? Uh, and this is my last question, Tony. Yeah. That was sort of part of that trifecta for Mark Dindle. Jason uh, Booz, who was working at. Um, oh, I know Jason. Yeah. He's, he, uh, he was our, our head of animation and, uh, he and his team, you know, brought these characters to life and, and same, like, you know, he's a very good draftsman. He can draw, even though they're doing everything obviously in, in CG. Yeah. He was a, a 2D, he was a 2D guy. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, we would, we would have, uh, a lot of, a lot of meetings with him and he, you know, uh, Taylor did, did, uh, animation drawers throughout the whole production. So, they would go back and forth on every animation meeting. Um, mm -hmm. 
and, and trying to keep those, you know, those tight silhouettes and keeping those iconic Garfield poses. And, um, yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's great. You guys had a great team, but, yeah. um, a great team needs a great leader, Pete. And that was you for sure. And Mark and just, just really phenomenal getting to know you today. Um, yeah. Tom, I am summarizing because we are wrapping up now. Well, we didn't get so, to talk about his children's books like you wanted to. I know I did want, want to, want to do another, another one. Yeah. Let's do yeah. another one. What is it to be? Yeah. Go from animation to children's book. I feel like we could have a panel of different people yeah. on that one. Uh, that would be fun. Oh, that would be cool. That's, yeah. That's a good, that's a good one. Maybe that's a panel for Lightbox, Tom. Something to think about. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, we will be at Lightbox, too. That's for our fans out there. Please uh, look for us in October. Lightbox Expo coming in October of 2025. Thank you, Pete, for being with us today on the Bancroft Brothers Animation Podcast. Yeah. It's been great oh, getting you, to Pete. know you, sir. Thank you, Tony and Tom. I appreciate it. It was a huge honor. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we always say, Tom, animate. Animate. From, the, from heart. the heart. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, Pencilish Studios.